Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to talk about arrays in Kotlin. So for beginner programmers, I'm going to go through the basic usage of simple arrays in Kotlin. And then for anyone who's a bit more advanced, we're going to talk a little bit about how this relates to the underlying Java virtual machine. So we've seen that in Kotlin, you can create simple variables like this. Let's create a variable called text and set it equal to some string. So here we've got an immutable variable just set to some text and the variable is going to be of type string, which the Kotlin compiler will infer from the fact that we are setting it equal to a string. We are assigning a string value to it. Now often in programming you have lists of things. So you don't just have one value, you have a whole list of values that sort of fall under some kind of category. An example would be the months of the year. Or what if you've got a photo album and you want to list all the years that you have photos for? Again, you've got a sequence of numbers, but you don't want to give them individual names. You want to combine them into some kind of list structure. And in this video, we're going to look at the most basic way of doing that using Kotlin arrays. So let's take the example of a list of months, or we could better say an array of months. An array in programming basically just means a list of items. So we can create a list of strings like this. We type array of, this is a built-in function, and then we can list the things that we want in the array. In this case, I'm going to put in Jan, Feb, Ma, and that's enough because I'm already tired of typing months. So what can we do with this? Well, we can access individual items in it via a subscript notation. So let's do print line. And suppose we want to access January. Now, an important thing to note is that the indices that you use are based on zero. So this is item zero, this is item one, and this is two. It's important not to get confused and start thinking this is one, two, and three. We've got zero, one, and two here. So we type the name of the variable, and then we need square brackets, and then the index of the item that we want to retrieve. So if you want January, then we want a zero in there. And if I run this, we get Jan. And of course, you can access February and March. So February is at index one, and March is at index two. And it's important to realize that with the basic array type in Kotlin, you can't make it bigger or smaller. So we declared here an array of three items. We can't then add more items to it. We can't add in April, May, June, or whatever. There are ways to do that that we're gonna look at later on, but in this first bit of the course, we're just gonna look at the most basic stuff. However, you can change the items in the array. So for example, let's change the item at position two, which is currently March because we've got zero, one, two. Let's change that to hello. And then I'm gonna print out item two again. So item zero and one, or elements, I should maybe say zero and one, they aren't going to be affected. We're just changing two. And there we can see we've now got February, March, and hello. Now in Kotlin, it's possible to mix the types of things that you have in an array, but that's not usually a good idea. So usually in an array, you only have one type of thing. It's more efficient that way. And usually it makes more sense in the context of your program. Here we've got an array of strings. If we want to create arrays of numerical values or Boolean values, we've got special functions that can do that more efficiently. So let's create an array of integers. Let's say val numbers equals, and we can now use int array of, and let's put some numbers in there like three, five, seven, or whatever you like. And then we can access those just as before. So what's this seven gonna be? This is gonna be item zero, one, two. So let's print out for the print line numbers two, and we expect to get seven. And of course we could change that if we want to. So here we go, seven. So we've got a bunch of functions that we can use like double array of. If we type array of, the autocomplete is actually pretty helpful. We can see int array of, char array of, double array of, float, long, short, boolean, 
you in too long, you short and short. So we've got a bunch of different specific functions that we should use because they are more efficient if we are creating arrays of basically very simple types, like not strings, but any kind of number or chart or booleans. So if you're new to programming, I recommend that at this point, you just practice this. If you practice this, you get the hang of it, declaring arrays, accessing values in the arrays, changing the values in the arrays. If you get the hang of that, then you basically pass the test here. But for anyone who wants a bit more information, I'm just gonna talk now a little bit about what's going on here in terms of the underlying Java virtual machine. So I'll try to make this as understandable as possible to beginner programmers. But if you are a complete beginner, you're not gonna fully understand all of it. And that's all right, because what you really need to know is, is basically right here. That's the stuff you need to practice. So let's take a look at this array of numbers here. Let's do print line. And actually, I almost forgot that there is one more thing that's worth knowing about at this point, which is that if you type the name of an array, you can use the method content to string to actually produce a visual representation of the array. Let's just take a look at that. So here we've got a, our array of numbers printed out and you can see that it's got square brackets around it to clue you in that it is an array. But let's see what happens if we try to print the array without doing that. So if I just try to directly print the variable name of the array numbers, if we run that, what we actually get is this cryptic looking thing. Now this is kind of coming from the Java virtual machine. I can imagine that this might change in the future. So if you try this and you don't get this, I wouldn't worry about it if you're looking at this somewhat in the future. It's now September 2024. Maybe this will change in future because this is kind of exposing sort of an implementation detail of the Java virtual machine, or at least that's how it looks to me, which is probably not ideal. But what this is actually saying is the thing that we've tried to print is an array we know that because of this square bracket and it's of type int and Java actually makes a difference between primitive int values, which are just bits of data that don't have methods and integer objects, which are entities that do have associated methods. So Java does this for the sake of efficiency, but Kotlin handles this a bit differently, a bit more transparently. So you don't really have to think about it so much in Kotlin. But let's see what happens if we try to use the plain ordinary array of to create an array of numbers. So I'm going to rename this to numbers one, and then we can create numbers two. Let's put all this stuff together and copy it and create a new version of it, which I'll rename to numbers two. And this time I'll try to create an array of numbers using just the plain ordinary array of that we would use for strings or other objects for which there isn't a specific function like int array of or char array of. So I'm going to put a note here. Don't do this. Should use int array of. But let's actually run this so that we can see what type of thing numbers two actually is. And we can see here that it looks a little bit different to before. So previously, when we printed out just the name of the array, we got this bracket I thing indicating an array of primitive integers in the Java virtual machine. But now that we've used this wrongly, we've actually got a array of the integer class type. So we've still got the bracket indicating it's an array. This L means some kind of object type that is specified here. And what we've got is a kind of more heavyweight type than we previously had. We've got values of this integer type. And this is called auto boxing. It's where we take primitive values in the Java virtual machine and automatically transform them into some more complicated class type. And we want to avoid that normally. This isn't very efficient and that's why we don't do it. You can do it and it does work, but it's less efficient for integers or other kinds of numbers or char or boolean than doing this. This is better. Another thing that I want to show you is that it is possible to mix different types 
in Kotlin arrays. Let's copy this, create a copy of it, and I'm going to say don't do this, only put one type in arrays. That's not a absolutely hard and fast rule, but that is usually what you want to do. So let's call this values, and I'm going to rename this, this, and this. And let's mix up different types here. So we've got some integers there. Let's put a floating point type in there. And let's also put some text in there. So this is what we don't want to do, but it does work. Let's try running it. So if you look at the output here, you can see that we've got the seven coming out. Maybe I should have put a blank line up here to make this a bit clearer. Let's just do this. So if I just have an empty print line statement, we'll have a blank line separating out the output from here, from this output, which is going to be a little bit clearer. Okay, so now you can see we've, we're printing out the seven as before, and it's working fine. We could also access these values. That would work fine as well. And this content to string works. We've printed out our array successfully. But if we just print the name of the array by itself, and again, it's possible this may change in a future version of Kotlin. But you can see that the type of thing that we've got in the array is some kind of object and the actual type is called object. Now, what is that? Well, as you'll know, if you are a Java programmer, but otherwise you won't know, in Kotlin, everything has a type and we call the type of thing its class. And the classes are organized into hierarchies where most classes have a super type. So if you think in everyday life, we've got, for example, cats. We could say the super type of cat is maybe feline, and the super type of feline is animal. And what do we call the super type of everything in everyday English language? Well, we'd probably call it an object or an entity. And it's the same in Java. The super type of all objects is actually a class called object, slightly confusingly. So what we've actually done here is to create an array of object. And that's been necessitated by the fact that we've got different types of things in there. And we don't normally want this. It's normally not very efficient nor very useful. We want only one type of thing in our array. And then the type of the array will be something that's very much geared to the type of thing that's in it. Okay, so let's take a look at the whole thing. So this is what we've now got. And if you're a beginner, especially just practice this stuff and be aware that you shouldn't do this stuff. And that's really the point of this video. And don't forget, if you want to access the code without squinting your eyes, looking at the video, if you go to github.com slash cave of programming slash Kotlin, you can find all the source code for my videos right there. So that's it for this video. Until next time, happy coding.